Hello friends! Today I want to share with you how I color in my digital illustrations in Photoshop. Welcome back to my art channel Momo Hoskin. Or if you are new, hey, my name is Momo and I draw. <laughs> this is the third part of my in-depth tutorial about how to create a digital portrait in Photoshop. If you haven't watched the previous two videos yet, I recommend watching these first. You don't have to, of course, but I think it is helpful to understand the whole process of creating art in Photoshop. I will link the other two videos in the info card at the top right corner, as well as in the description box below. A little disclaimer beforehand, again, like in the previous videos, I'm just talking about my personal experiences about character illustrations in Photoshop. Other media or themes, and actually also character portraits, may profit from other techniques. Um, it all depends on personal taste and preferences. Please keep that in mind. Um, there are countless ways for approaching coloring in digital media and one of which I will explain today. But for now, surprise, I made another layout. I played around with the settings a bit and made a lovely avocado inspired background. I hope you like it as much as I do. Um, because of the many different appearances of my recordings, I probably will not create a single video of the whole drawing process. Or what do you think? Would you like um, to see the video even though of the changing layout during the process? Um, please let me know. I made a poll coming up at the top right corner again. There will be one more part of this tutorial series though uh, coming up next week in which I talk about shading. On to today's topic though. Coloring... Um, I messed up. Yep. For coloring in my digital art I usually use the magic selection tool and select the outside of my line art. After that, I invert the, the <laughs> After that, I invert the selection so that the inside of the contour is selected. This way, I only have to select one area instead of all the little areas within my drawing. I recommend shrinking the selection by one or two pixels depending on the thickness of your contour. This way, you won't risk creating the base color layer outside your contour by accident. I go to the um, menu at the top of the Photoshop window and select, I think, selection and there is something like change selection and there I can use expand or shrink or other things I should have been looking up before I talk about it, but um, I think you can also change that while with right clicking the selection, but I'm not sure yet. Um, I messed up again, I'm sorry. Today is not a good day. Um, yeah, uh, after I got the selection. I create a new layer under my line art layer, or in my case many layers, and fill in the selection with a bucket tool. Since this line art though, though is split into more than one part, I had to make some corrections manually and in the end I guess it would have been faster if I did an outline uh, by hand and filling that in with a bucket tool, but then I, I wasn't that clever back then. <laughs> However, now we have a base color layer that we can use to create the flat coloring. That means there only is the neutral colors of the character, without any color of light or shading involved. But first of all, I locked the layer. 
in Photoshop there is a small icon looking like a mini chessboard at the top of the layer panel box thing. I click it and a tiny lock appears next to my base color layer graphic in that box. And that means I will only affect pixels that already exist on this layer with my actions and I won't create any new ones. As a result, I won't, counter, uh, I won't color <laughs> outside the lines in this case. Every graphic program I have worked with offers this function. In Paint Tools I, you must check the Preserve Opacity option um, that is at the top of the layer section. Photoshop has the little checkered icon and Clip Studio Paint locks layers by clicking a symbol that has a little checkered icon with a lock next to it. I use Windows Movie Maker for editing and as far as I know I can't lay an image on top of the drawing so I will simply provide a link to screenshots in the, in the description box below for you to check out where to find the option, lock, uh, the option to lock your layer. The next step is I create a layer mask for each color of the uh, for each color of the character. Some people prefer to only use one clipping mask and color in the character's colors, but it all depends on the artist's taste and um, the individual drawing. Again, there are no rules, just hints. Layer masks in general, though, have saved my life. In Photoshop, I create a new layer above the base color layer, right-click it, right -click it and select Create Layer Mask, or something similar, oh, my Photoshop speaks German. <laughs> what that does is that I won't color out outside my base layer either while I'm drawing on a separate layer. For me, that's very convenient as I can keep my workspace clean and sometimes they are useful for edits. Uh, luckily, I was provided with a very nice and clean character reference from which I simply copied the color chart you can see um, I had put in right at the beginning. On a separate monitor, I have the character reference up at all time to draw the markings from. I create a new layer for each shade for mark for each shade of the markings for the headphones, a layer for each this Clara and Iris and one for teeth and, and so on. Um, what I recently discovered is that it helps me to color in the first base layer in a shade that is very different from the character's colors. This way I can make sure I don't miss any area accidentally. Later on, I changed the odd color to the main color of the character. This time, I also got the chance to play around with glow effects in Photoshop as I was planning to make the cheek markings and the headphones have a pink gloom to them. I mostly did that by duplicating the layer I had the specific area drawn on and this is where layer masks came in handy for me. <laughs> And I played around with the layer options. I double click the layer I copied and see which results I get with different settings. Basically it's just checking and unchecking boxes. <laughs> but so far I'm satisfied with the result that's showing a little gloom and none of those in your face neon sign lights. <laughs> I really like the subtle out outcome. Um, this time I also included a cute little background. I created a pattern out of music keys. For the background color, I chose one that contrasts the character but still goes well with the character's color scheme. You can see me switching the hue, contrast and lighting settings around till I find a color I find appealing. The key stands out just a little bit because I reduced their layer's opacity. <laughs> opacity. Um, this way, they surround the character without distracting from it too much. That's it for today's video and I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please give it a big thumbs up to let me know. Don't forget to vote in the poll in the top right corner if you want to see a video of the whole making process of this portrait. 
Also, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell if you want to see more of my art videos every Wednesday. A subscription is absolutely free but makes Momo happy. Have a good day and stay creative friends. Bye!